Today is August the 14th, 2015. We're with Mr. Abdullah Hasek at his apartment in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, this is Stephen Sloan. I'm with Melissa Sloan and Nathan Roberts that are part of a team that's doing a grant for the Texas Holocaust and Genocide Commission. And we're here to interview uh, Mr. Hasek about his experience in his home country of Bosnia. Thank you, Mr. Hasek, uh, for sitting down with us today. Um, I, I would, I know you were born in 1977. 1970, sorry. 1977? 1970. 1970. Mm -hmm. Okay, 1970. So you and I are about the same age, but you're holding up a lot better than I am. You look better than I do. Um, <laughs> so we're going to talk a lot about your experiences in the 1990s and the challenges in your country in the 1990s. But I'd like to know a little bit about your family uh, and about your early life, if you could tell me a little bit about that. Okay. <clears throat> Basically, I'm born in 1970, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, it was at that time former Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> uh, my family live near city Srebrenica. This is uh, mostly, basically, little city with a lot of village. Like, <clears throat> basically, mostly for Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And uh, my family was living in one of, of those villages uh, near Srebrenica. I had uh, two brothers and two sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, five of us. A mother, father, uh, uncles, so on, so on. And later on, I lost my sight and I have to go in the school in Sarajevo. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, there I was finished elementary school, high school, and uh, start college. Mm -hmm. One semester, basically, of the law school. So how did you lose your sight? Uh, doctor's mistake. I had uh, first... Uh, some high fever and then uh, doctors consider that they have to make surgery and that make two or three surgery. One of those surgery <clears throat> that give me uh, what do you call bad anesthesia and then I was wake up nice. oh. under uh, on, on the almost middle surgery. Oh. <laughs> and then uh, I remember when, when I wake up and then I just start grab with my hand, doctor's hand, and then doctor was in shock. Oh. And then, when they are done after that, I was lost sight and so on. So on. Yes. basically, that that was a story about it. Now, since uh, you were sighted before you were six, do you have memories? Mm, kind of, a little. Yeah. yeah, it was far away and so on. Yeah. What are what are some memories that come back to you or that stick with you from when you had your sight? Well, mostly start when light when the, when I turned on lights and then and I couldn't see in lights I was just close eyes and start crying mm, I see. what what was your uh, father's occupation uh, my father w worked in, in the as, as um, mayor on the ground a, a mayor yes oh he was a mayor yes so so a, a city official. No, 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 no. It's, you know, when, when, when people do underground, like, uh, pull out some gold on, on, on. Oh, he's a miner. Yes. Miner. Ah, he was a miner. Yeah. yeah. I see. A, a very hard life. A very hard occupation. Well, he chose that. Yeah. He, he had a better life, but he didn't want to. He could be some general, but he didn't want to choose that. They offered to him, but he didn't want to. They offered to, for him to stay in the military? Uh, they offered to him stay in the military and, and, and be general, and he didn't want to. I see. This is under Tito? Yes. Uh -huh. um, and I, I know in your country, the 1980s was very hard. A very hard time. Uh, if I see now from the dis distance. Yeah. And since I learn and had good education and, and, and I can think opposite than you do. Yeah. Uh, because 
in former Yugoslavia, basically people have more freedom than any communist country others. Yes. Uh, former Yugoslavia was socialist and, and communist, both. Yes. And was more, <clears throat> more better than, than any communist country. Uh, well, freedom was kind of, I don't know what people think of freedom, but if you think of the freedom that you can cause somebody or, or, or whatever is it, I don't know. It was little distinction, but it's not so bad how other people think. Mm-hmm. It was bad, but it's not so, you know, it, it depends what people looking and, and, and what they want to s- say it, it's bad. If it's later, I, I learn. Mm-hmm. I mean, later, uh, from the dis- distance, it was better than maybe, in, in no, maybe for sure, yeah. uh, in, in that, that time and now. Than in, in in Syria, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, even Libya, what what was not communist country? Yes. Uh, better than Russia, better than Cuba, and better than than East Germany and, and many 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 other country. Uh, only we was not capitalist country; it was socialist and, and communist. Mm-hmm. It wasn't perfect, but but especially with what's to come. It was a good time. You have good memories of that time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had very good, and and, and education was free. Uh, you could educate how much you want to. It was free. Mm-hmm. Only you have to pay books, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and 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 you have to pay a kind of a living. But mostly, if you are a student, you could get a scholarship, and then that pay for you. Dormitory, food, and whatever is it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's kind of half half, you know, mm-hmm. but for sure it was better than war. Yes. Well, can you tell me a little bit about uh, before we get to the war? Um, what was your country like? What was your experience like growing up um, in Bosnia? <laughs> in that time, you know, I was kind of still, if you Want to me go? You mean when Bosnia was in former Yugoslavia? Yes. In that time, I was very young, and uh, <clears throat> for me, things was good. That time, mm-hmm. uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina as as a state, a republic on the former Yugoslavia was was uh, with with federal <clears throat> Yugoslavia had mm-hmm. many resources. Uh, for everything, uh, all resources and, and though the was export in the other states of the former Yugoslavia, mm-hmm. and other states make goods and then return and sells more expensive to Bosnia and Herzegovina, mm-hmm. like example Slovenia, Croatia and Serbia, mm-hmm. and uh, still was kind of good, you know that explode. But still was that time you are young, you, you just think, how can you have some party? How can you go in school or whatever is it may kind of in that time was good for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I did that time also many occup- occupation, like example, playing chess, uh, start going in some contest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Occupied with ham radio operation was popular. It's also good, and uh, and kind of get some better and, 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 and good education and so on, so on. Mm-hmm. Can you can you talk a little bit more about those two interests? About when you became interested in ham radio, uh, and what age, and what was that like for you? Uh, I was interesting in 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 when I was. 15 years old about ham radio. Mm-hmm. Chess, I was interested already when I was second grade I see. in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, chess was kind of one of, of, of the good because of you you practicing your brain. Mm-hmm. And uh, I loved to, to play that. And, and, and I was also in the, in the tournament with, with other uh, people, with, with other clubs and and. and, and even with, with on, on the state, 
and on the federal tournament and on the chess. National competition. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And also and the ham radio I like ch- challenge. Mm. I like new stuff. And when I start I go and first try can I do it? And when I was that that you have to think and then also challenge your brain and then practice you have to know more code for the ham radio. Mm-hmm. For the get in that time, we had called C class. You have to <clears throat> uh, uh, recognize and make on the paper 50, between 50 and 60 letters and number in the one minutes. Mm. And if you want better, better license, then you have to know between 80 and 120 signals in the one minutes like <clears throat> uh like letters uh numbers and and, and, and all those signals so what mm-hmm. someone is typing and you have to uh, put on the paper mm-hmm. and uh, then see did you do goods or not mm-hmm. and you have to know about electric how to make antenna for the ham radio how to make contact with other people in in in, in the state uh, country europe continents and so on so on. Mm-hmm. And, and and how much electricity you need for the your radio station input output and so on so on. Mm-hmm. so did you develop uh, relationships with ham uh, radio operators in other areas yes yeah yes it was it was kind of also one of, of the of the good things Better than today, we have Skype and Facebook. Yes, I know. In those in those uh, field in ham radio, you cannot find criminals. You cannot find. Uh, oh, I hate cold, but let's go say, kind of stupid people. Mm-hmm. You will find mostly intelligent people, uh, mostly good people and people with whom you can learn something mm-hmm. and a uh, people who is uh, very nice friendly and if you sometimes need help anytime they will help you mm-hmm. those is, is in, in ham radio and similar is in, in chess mm-hmm. and that's why today that mostly people doesn't do that it, it's a loose kind of things what I used to have, but still many people do ham radio. Mm-hmm. And today we have computers, what, what is kind of good, one side good, one side bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was the original internet, a uh, way to communicate across <laughs> big distances. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, basically I use them a lot. But if I, as I use them a lot, also I hate them. Of the, of the, you know, everyone have, uh, everyone can go on internet. Mm-hmm. What is good? Yeah. I don't, doesn't mind about that. <laughs> Even but, the stupid people can go on the internet. Uh, well, it's not, it's not problem with that. I also can handle that. But problem is, uh, criminal people. Mm. have access in those things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you have uh, cybers, you have people who who steal things and, and, and so on. There is problem, but other everything I can handle, it's not, handle, it's not problem about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can tell you're a person who liked to learn, you were curious about it. So when you're talking to these people outside the Soviet Union, particularly in Europe, what are the sorts of things you're asking them, or what sort of things would you talk about? Uh, what do you mean? When I, oh, well, in, in ham radio, when you talk, if you mean like that, yeah. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> you have a course on the ham radio. Yeah. And you teach, I mean, you learn uh, that you cannot speak with many people from many country freely and so on and so on. Yes. Because uh, there are restrictions. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and you are not there to make problems somebody else. If I ask them about some politics politic situation and so on and so on, then those people would be problems. And also, as we have today, uh, that we are that that, that agency mm-hmm. monitor our cell phones, internet, and so on and so on. Same way in that times, we had also agency who monitor and 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 and, and watch what we're doing on on the on the ham radio mm-hmm. in in the whole world, yeah. not only in former Yugoslavia, but it, it's happened. And I agree with that. That that that. I don't have anything. I don't have anything about about that uh, against that. This mm-hmm. is one side good things. Mm-hmm. Did and, you did you ever have any, any encounters with government officials over your use of your radio? No, no. I didn't have problems because I know what is my job. Job where I can, uh, where is my limit, mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> and also if I if I go over limit. Uh, I had connection and <laughs> and, and uh, you know I could do that. <laughs> you knew where the boundaries were, right? Yes. Yeah, what you could do. Could yes, do. And, yeah. and and I had one access in war. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was I think ninety four. Mm-hmm. I had license, and on on the license in in your license, what you have license, you have also feel where I can where you you can uh, go. Examples, uh, you have. Ham radio, they're going on the 80 meters, uh, 40 meters, whatever is it, mm-hmm. you know, step by step. Mm-hmm. And also you have frequency up to you can go to do. I see. And I was over frequency. <laughs> Sometimes I, I mean, I, I just go and break rule. Mm-hmm. And in that time, uh, director of the communication and, and, and whatever is it and then he go and try to interrupt me I knew that he is and then he told me what are you doing here and I told him I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and then he asked me but you know you can't do this I says well I know but a rule is rule and, 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 and when you have to you have to and then he says, we will punish you. I says, You're, you can try, but we will see. And then little was kind of just interview later and nothing happened. I see. Okay. <laughs> so you knew where the boundaries were, but you pushed them a little bit. Uh, in the, when you have emergency situation, then yes, it's, it's different soul. Yes. And I had emergency situation and I have to, and he didn't know. But you know how is when when people that have rules and that things that can do whatever they want, mm-hmm. then they behave like they are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the the situation in you, the former Yugoslavia begins to change in the late nineteen eighties. When Tito died. Yes. When, yes. When Tito died, can you talk a little bit about your memories of? of the political situation and, and how it affected your family? Uh, when Tito died, many people were sad. Uh, uh, because <clears throat> in one hand, he uh, he was dictator, but he was not dictator. He was not di- dictator, whatever. It's both. He was, but he was not. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, all people who didn't wo- uh, like for uh, form Yugoslavia, those country, that was happy when he died. Mm-hmm. It's true he did some things like uh, Stalin did. Mm-hmm. Uh, many people was innocent. What he put on the jail, maybe he killed. I don't know who was is an innocent who was not. Mm-hmm. But happened what's happened up. To 1980, and then <clears throat> we have some uh, people who was emigrate uh, from the Second World War who was not agree with with Tito's side, and that was in in, in Germany, Italy, uh, United States, South America, and so on, so, mm-hmm. and often that time they try 
coming from Yugoslavia when Tito was alive and then try to sabotage some things and then do whatever they tried to do. And <clears throat> that was not successful. Later on, when he died, uh, change was very fast. Yeah. Already from the 1980 to 1983 was already a start problem in form Yugoslavia on, on, on the political field. Uh, we had six that called republics mm -hmm. or, or states, whatever you want to. And then mostly mostly two states, even three states was what I feel competent to be leader of the form Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Serbia, Croatia, and uh, Slovenia. But Slovenia most was interested to separate and, and, and go away from, from Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know, because <clears throat> they don't have any resources and, and it's kind of little, little, little state and those state lived from the other state and still that even when they in Europe, U United Europe, still that, that kind of, I don't know, but happened what's happened. Yeah. And then they had kind of from the communist party people changed to, to nationalist. Yes. Uh, you had like Franjo Tujman was already dead, Slobodan Milosevic also dead and <clears throat> that was already in the political field. Even even Franjo Tujman he was in the jail, Tito put him in the jail I think it's 1970, 1972, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then when he came he waited from the his side and when the open political uh, feel that, that, that we can have democratic system mm -hmm. like you can register political party, party and go on the election then president of the Croatia I mean he was not president but uh, he made political party Franjo Tujman and then he win yeah. when he win uh, then he has problem with, with president of Serbia who will be president of the, of the form Yugoslavia, how how will uh, form Yugoslavia be federa federative republic or confederative? Mm -hmm. They couldn't make negotiation about that. And then there was president of the, of the form Yugoslavia that that time was men from the Croatia. Mm -hmm. uh, when Tito died, they the, the, the make uh, negotiation that each year was president of the former Yugoslavia from the one republic. Mm -hmm. And when it was president from the Croatia, then a Serbian wanted to kill them, yeah. but secretly. And uh, they didn't so on, so on things happen like happen. Then a Slovenia, a Slovenian uh, senator or Congress, whatever you want to call them, uh, go away from the, from the Belgrade, Belgrade, Belgrade was uh, capital of the former Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> they just go in and say we are separate from the former Yugoslavia. Little was kind of maybe two or three days and then, and then military go away from the Slovenia and then little by little war start. Yeah. It was kind of stuff like that. Yes. Well, everyone's vying for power. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And the problem is everyone buying for the power, but <clears throat> in, in that time in form Yugoslavia, if they want to power, uh, they have to first get uh, own people. To get own people, they have to use Hitler's tactic. Yes. And they have to make own people to hate other side, other people. Yeah. Doesn't matter what they are, Serb, Croatian, Muslim, whatever is it. And if they do that like they did, and then when they get those people to, to hate other side, it's easy to make war. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the within Bosnia, how is this affecting your family? How is this affecting your life? Uh, this this competition that's going on. Uh, competition going on. Still, uh, people was kind of confused. Uh, they didn't know 
war will be war not so on no one couldn't believe that it will happen war mm-hmm. uh, because <clears throat> for Yugoslavia was uh, a communist regime was kind of make them very hard to things never war happened yeah. and people believe in in neighbor people believe in so on so on and if you if you have your neighbor in in, in foreign Yugoslavia and Bosnia Bosnia and Herzegovina was not like United States if I have neighbor oftentimes at least one times per day we will sit and drink coffee together mm-hmm. and they know each other they know even how many spoons they have in the house <laughs> and those was, was people not only your neighbor even you you know you know two three or four or five village far away from you mm-hmm. you knew all people people know you and and and, and people sometimes on, on the month or week pass to, to those villages sit with, with each other drinking coffee if they need help something they help each other and they could not uh, things that happened was happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they knew your parents. They knew your grandparents. Yes. Yeah, and, yeah. and that yeah. there are no not only parents, not only grandparents. Mm-hmm. That children, there are no, like I says, uh, maybe on, on on the half cities, on, uh, 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 you knew everything, mm-hmm. and everyone knew know you. Mm-hmm. Like examples, like I says, uh, city of Serenza was was not big city, but they have big villages. So many villages. And people know each other uh, from one up, up to maybe f- five or six villages and so on. And, and, and then if you don't know someone and you go or, or you meet in city or somewhere, someone from the five or four village and you know, and you ask them and he knows or she knows maybe next five or six village. <laughs> those, those you could know whole city or whatever is it. Well, and we, and I know that. Bosnia during this time and later on of course it's going to change but even during this time it was very ethnically diverse you had Croats you had Serbs you have Muslims but you're saying you didn't feel the difference before war no yeah. no and and, and 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 you could not believe uh, in, in if some uh, that that someone can take knife or, or, or a gun and, and come and burn your house and, and shoot your so and so. It was impossible that time to think those things. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a situation in which, of course, the Soviet Union is fading away. Uh, as far as any power and control in Yugoslavia over the chaos that's going on there, right? Uh, Soviet Union uh, couldn't have at that time any influence on, on, on the foreign, foreign Yugoslavia if you're thinking on, on the beginning of the war. Yeah. Uh, they couldn't have any influence even if they want to because of the uh, Soviet Union also started to, to crushing. Yes. And Berlin's war, war was a, a mostly deadly target for the Soviet Union. And that time, Soviet Union was <clears throat> have occupied on on own mind on problems in 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 the in the Russian Soviet Union because many st- uh, state of the Soviet Union was separate. Many state was wanted going NATO pact, yes. uh, so on so on, and and they have but still they are tried. Uh, only what they have uh, influence and and and. What things that that, that that Soviet Union will help was Serbia, yeah. and I don't know. Serbian people says that they have kind of good tradition, fr- friend tradition, a friendship tradition, and they have also like that says like uh, they kind of both Orthodox and so on, so on. But <laughs> <laughs> for me, I grow up and, and I, I know for sure all situation, uh, everything is lie. Whatever Serbia need help, uh, Soviet Union <laughs> just go away, and and and, and what they help them with words. Yeah, that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. If you see examples, if they want to help them, they would not let them 
uh, occupied uh, Kosovo 1999 and uh, NATO pact come and and, yeah. and so on. But well, in, in the things continue to change very quickly in 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 your country, and I, I know um, in 1991 Croatia and Slovenia declare their independence. Yes, it is. Yeah. And uh, from that, everything go very fast. Yeah. Okay. In, in 1992, Bosnia and Herzegovina declared uh, also. Yes. And so, so can you take me through how the situation? It's all very fast, but but how the situation is changing for your family, or what are you thinking? How are you feeling? What are you talking about as a family as these changes are happening? Uh, still was uh, kind of people still was confused and people couldn't think that, that, that that's happening and so on uh, this is like examples you live in Texas yeah and somewhere on the California or in, in, in New York State or whatever is that have kind of you know media still was uh, biased and media still didn't uh, tell you truth yeah what's going on because there was control from the regime regime was in in, in belgrade mm -hmm. belgrade was uh, still capital city mm -hmm. and <clears throat> still uh, first news a uh, real news people could go uh, get when some soldier escaped from the military mm -hmm. and then you can get right a new uh, news even even if the try to, to skip in that time uh, for Yugoslavia that had in uh, you know in, in the military mm -hmm. every day you have to uh, watch news even before don't, uh, this is from Tito regime yeah uh, who is military they have uh, every day they have to watch news they had a political election and that uh, when, when the kind of beginning, uh, Croatia, Slovenia, and so on, and then they start be more repressive from the military, and didn't let them watch any other news, only what military decide to, to yeah. let them do. Yeah. And when they try to send them somewhere uh, from the military base to uh, independence, if they want to send them in Slovenia and so on, and I told them, well, they have problems, examples, uh, Serb and, and, and Slovenia that, that are trying to fight with, with each other, but we are going to be between them. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and when they come on the field, different situation. Yeah. Well, you know how important information is. Mm -hmm. And so controlling the information meant a lot of power. With With... Freedom opening up. Did you have a little more freedom on your ham radio to get information and to gather information? Yes, I did. I did. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> in that time I was in Sarajevo, mm -hmm. uh, starting to manage law school. Now, when did? You, can you tell me what year? What, what year did you go to law school? Uh, Nineteen ninety-one September. I started. Okay. Okay. Uh, but before I was kind of in Sarajevo and, and with uh, hanging with friends and taking a place for the dormitory mm -hmm. uh, where I can live during students days and so on and so on and uh, <clears throat> one night I was sitting in ham radio club with my friends <laughs> and uh, we think uh, we talking about those situation. Uh, we knew very well what's going on in former Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. but still, in somehow somewhere in our brain, uh, still couldn't believe what we know. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know how it was up to yesterday, and you cannot believe what will be happen. Yeah. And especially we couldn't believe that will happen in Bosnia and Herzegovina and Sarajevo ever. It was a city what was more better than Beirut, mm -hmm. where you had everywhere mosque, church, uh, synagogue, 
and people was mixing. You you couldn't know why is Muslim, uh, Jewish, Croats, Zerbish, whatever is it. And, and, and plus, in building where they live, everyone know everyone. Everyone at least one time per week go in each other's uh, apartment and, and drink coffee and even have lunch together. And you couldn't, you couldn't believe it. Yeah. But <clears throat> still, uh, often one time uh, on on the beginning in September, I, I remember when 1991, when Serbish and, and, and Montenegro um, paramilitary with uh, with, with United, I mean with with former Yugoslavia forces. Yes. Uh, tried to occupy the city Dubrovnik. Uh, one of the my colleague, uh, she uh, she lived in dormitory where I lived, and I didn't know where even where is she from. Uh, she lived in in the second floor. floor I lived in in, in in the first floor, but we know each other, but was not close to friends each other, mm-hmm. and. When I go in in a ham radio club that night, it was Friday night, I think, and I found her there. I asked her, "What are you doing here?" She says, "I'm." I, she says, "I'm trying to talk to my mom." Mm. Where is your mom? She says, "In Dubrovnik." Mm. <laughs> and what can you do that? Then you know what kind of situation is. Just try to to find someone from the ham radio from the Bromnik and see what can you do. That's it. Yeah. Uh, can I ask why the law? Why what made you decide to study law? Why law? Yeah. Why why that career? <laughs> <laughs> I says to Melissa already <laughs> when I I decide what kind of high school I want to go. And in that time, they start a school in, in former Yugoslavia for the, for the computer things, but still was very hard and, and, and kind of still like, like pioneer. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't do that because of the, my sight. I see. And then I decide going in, in some school with four year of, of the high school because it formed Yugoslavia system school is different than the United States. Mm-hmm. You have elementary school. Elementary school is from the one up to eight grades. Mm-hmm. When you're done, that's, this is elementary school. Mm-hmm. And then you have four years of the high school. First, second, third, and fourth, uh, fourth grades. Mm-hmm. And then I go in and, and, and took two years telecommunications mm-hmm. uh, I didn't like that mm. and then I made transfer to medical school of physical therapy when I transfer those things I have to also pass a few things what I didn't have in the communication school like I have to pass Latin language mm-hmm. and some from the medical stuff biology Anthropology, and so on, so on. Basically, four, uh, four classes. I have to go and take test. Mm. What I did, what I did. When I finished that, I know that I want to go in college. I don't. I didn't want to do that. I mm. didn't want to be massage therapy. This is hard job. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's true. You can find job uh, in, in in the Europe very easy, but still, it's hard job, and I don't like basically do a hard job. <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted to become a lawyer so you wouldn't have to work hard? <laughs> and then, uh, still I didn't know what I'm going to do in, in college. Mm-hmm. When the fourth grade's done, and I finish uh, high school and so on, and then I think what I'm going to do, I know that I don't want to be a physical therapist. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, if I'm going to, to do anything, it's very hard. Only two things was left. Political science or the lawyer. Mm-hmm. And then I sit on the train. 
and go through Sarajevo. And my friend says, in the law school, they are still accepting application and you can take TASP test. Mm. And I take off and go take test, even I didn't prepare for those things. Mm-hmm. And I passed. When I passed, then I was lucky. In the dormitory, I found one, basically a few guys was from my city, from the Srebrenica. One of those was my <coughs> my roommate. And his aunt was director of the company where my, fa- my father worked. Oh. And then he make, he go in and, 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 and make influence and, and, and he gave me a scholarship. I what see. means after school, for sure I had a job. Hmm. But later nothing happened, as you know. Hmm. War started and yes. everything crashed. So what was your job that fall at, in law school? What job did you have? For the be lawyer of the company. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. So after school, he, yes. Yeah, he would give. Yeah, inform you like yeah means when you get scholarship. I see. At okay. least uh, 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 those company guarantee you for the work. Have a job assignment. Yes. When you're done. Yeah. Okay. Well, let, let's talk about when war came. I know you're in Sarajevo. You're in school, and everything changes. Um, can, can well, you first take, of all, yeah. I have to take. Uh, I mean, I I make I have to apologize for the Roberts, Nathan, because uh, I couldn't find my little books hmm. uh, where I I had ticket from the Sarajevo. The t- the ticket you had where you left yes. Sarajevo. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was when war started. I was in Sarajevo, mm-hmm. like you says. Yes. And uh, first war, like I says, like I says, all the time he was confused. War will be not, will be not, uh, for sure, in somewhere in our heads, we accept it, but we didn't want to believe that will be happens. Mm-hmm. And one night, uh, I was in dormitory and watching news when uh, from Yugoslavia, a few uh, trucks tried to make, uh, I mean, <clears throat> take weapon from the whatever is it to, to, to some probably paramilitary mm-hmm. and then uh, officials and the policemen that stopped them make control and found weapon mm-hmm. there was barricade and so on so on but for a few hours like nothing happened yeah. and next day uh, Friday night my friend says let's go in other city, we have Saturday and Sunday nothing to do, and let's go in in, in Tuzla. Sarajevo Tuzla is kind of one hundred fifty kilometers. It's it's around one hundred miles. Mm-hmm. We take bus, go there, be Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday we won't come to back in Sarajevo. But I couldn't because uh, it was I think February month. It was everywhere, barricade, uh, February 1992. Mm-hmm. Everywhere was barricade, and uh, for the Sunday, uh, 9 or 10 o'clock, when I start go from the Tuzla, uh, I couldn't enter in Sarajevo until my Monday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Is that because there were checkpoints you had to uh, go through? Checkpoints and plus not only not checkpoints, a uh-huh. uh, barricade in, in Sarajevo and uh, <clears throat> and bus train couldn't go and so on. Everything was kind of stopped. I see. And then after that, I came in Sarajevo and almost after one month, I had my friends. He was not living in Naimantori, but he was, he study agriculture, whatever is it. And he came uh, Friday 10 or 11 o'clock and then and, and I came from the law school. I finished with lecture and so on. And he says, what are you doing? I said, nothing. And he says, let's go in the Srebrenica and we can come Sunday. And I said, let's go. And we go in and, and, and buy tickets. Mm-hmm. And when they come, <clears throat> uh, it was kind of one, one Tory. We have bus. And we entered there around four, four thirty. In Sunday morning, uh, around 
eight o'clock when I try to prepare my stuff and then go and meet them on the bus station, we switch on TV and on TV barricade, everything closed. No one couldn't come into mm. and come out. This is in March? Uh, yes. Yeah. And that was yeah. war begin. Yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> that I stayed there uh, up to 1993 yeah. and then <clears throat> the Jewish forces and, and, and whatever that, that burn those my village and then I have to go temporarily in Srebrenica and then <clears throat> United Nations that make negotiation with, with whatever is it uh, Serbish governments to uh, take off some wounded people from the hospital mm -hmm. uh, to Tuzla and then I was <clears throat> with them and then I go in Tuzla and I was there up to 1995 mm -hmm. January month I see. Yeah. and then I work there in the hospital as, as, as a massage, massage therapist and I was kind of like a supervisor of the, of the department mm -hmm. for those things and also I work in the ham radio to help people have communication with, with, with some in the in the Srebrenica, those city and, and, and whatever. That time ham radio was like today telephone. You 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 could you d didn't have any any other communication. Mm -hmm. Did you have your ham radio equipment back in Srebrenica when you went back, or was it in Sarajevo? No, I didn't have it in, in Srebrenica. It was yeah. it was all stuff in, in Sarajevo. My my index, uh, I know I don't know what you will know what is index, but index is is things one books mm -hmm. little books, uh, what get every student when they start in 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 the, in the those university and on the first cover you had they had your picture your name id whatever is it and when you each month or semester listen all lecture uh, professor have to sign up that you attend in in, in the classes mm -hmm. and they put your grades when when you're done with, with testing and so on and only we <clears throat> different than the United States testing was we have uh, writing and or oral test mm -hmm. both and 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 then when you have a uh, oral test uh, also it's not like like United States mm -hmm. uh, you have a commission two or three professors sitting and then uh, that take book what you learn examples whatever is, is, is you study example biology mm -hmm. or and they have book of the biology and they just take an open book and says tell me something about this <laughs> uh, three question if you don't know then go and next semester you have to take again those things mm -hmm. yeah very different yeah. yes yeah. Uh, i'd like to ask so now that the war began in march of 1992 or independence is declared war fully begins Talk about how life changed in Srebrenica. Just... Still, uh, March, April, it's already totally changed. Very rapidly and, and, and very... Uh, already <clears throat> people uh, took some family and, and, and go as, as refugees in, in, in Slovenia and whatever is it. And... The next city was Bratunac from the Srebrenica. So it was kind of like five miles away. Uh, paramilitary from the Serbia, they already come, uh, took all people who are not Orthodox, uh, not only Muslim. Mm -hmm. or anyone who is not Orthodox uh, took them and they make concentration camp. Mm -hmm. uh, they had one <clears throat> gym from the elementary school and also they put people on the soccer field mm -hmm. and uh, woman and child uh, then some of those whatever they're 
maybe some of, of those that said they're raped and mostly they put them in buses and send them to Tuzla. Mm-hmm. That was a control authority of the Bosnian Herzegovina. Mm-hmm. Uh, men uh, from the 13, 14 years old, all male, many of them they are killed, especially the choose who is educate and who work for the governments mm-hmm. and other peoples that, that would kill all of them. But that was lucky be- because of the one <clears throat> a few uh, guys who was a special agent that kept some very important uh, of them guys and then for the those 14 guys that exchange I don't know maybe five people five to five hundred people mm-hmm. or, or one thousand I don't know I know that was my uncle and and my uncle uncle's sons yeah. with them and then when they change them uh, meanwhile when they do that in Bretonets uh, many people left from the Srebrenica city some people go in refugee in, in, in other country and some people skipped on the villages. Yeah. And then <clears throat> uh, those paramilitary start entering in, in the empty Srebrenica. Their job was uh, robbed all stores, mm-hmm. <laughs> took uh, whatever they have, uh, technology, if they have some stove, a refrigerator, whatever it was. They just robbed and, and go in, in, in the bazaar and then sell and whatever is it. No, I don't know. And then uh, some organized people who, who, who saw how people passed in, in the Bretonets, then they tried to organize. Mm-hmm. They didn't have any, any weapons, whatever is it. <laughs> it was funny how they do that. But you know, when you are in those situations, you have to think whatever you... Mm-hmm just for, for their own naked life. Mm-hmm. That took uh, some uh, things, you know, what you, when you make high building and you pull up those, uh, with those, what those machines. And uh, take those machines and pull up high them and go up on uh, those things. When paramilitary from the Serbia, uh, they enter in Srebrenica other way, they didn't go on, on, on the right way mm-hmm. and they go round. And when the few times do that, when they try to go from the Srebrenica on the right way, then they make barricade and kill of them and some of them uh, go away and they didn't come anymore. Mm-hmm. And that time was Srebrenica free from yeah. the, those, those paramilitary and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. And later on, you know, when, when they start to, to I tried the fencing and when they, <clears throat> when they kill some enemy, they, they find guns. This is only way how they get uh, weapons. Yeah. You didn't have other ways. Yeah. And then people didn't have food, people didn't have many things, and people who was in village, you know, that, that, that grow f- food, and I tried to share with people who didn't have it, but was everything very, very bad. Mm-hmm. Did- do you remember conversations uh, in your family about whether you should run, whether you should try to stay, whether yeah. <laughs> even if you if you have conversation it was for nothing because you couldn't run. Yeah. Where? Where run? Yeah. Nowhere. Because <clears throat> because everywhere uh, you can think this room. Shabrinsa was like this. Yeah. Everywhere else. On the other side, the Serbia border. Uh, if you go, they will catch you and then send you to those paramilitary. Mm-hmm. If they send you in paramilitary, 90% you will be dead, 10% maybe you will be alive. Yeah. And just stay and wait what will be happen. Yeah. That's like, like all people. So when was your family rounded up? And relocated. 1995, uh, July, I think it's 15. Now, the, in, in oh, oh yeah. it was it was in Srebrenica, it was March, March. 1993. Two, 
92 or 93? 93. 93. Yes. Okay. okay. And you were taken from there, and you, you said you, you were in this gym, and you were on soccer fields? Where, where were you? No, 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 no. No, I, 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 from there, I was, uh, we had ants. She had ant. She had uh, houses, and, and, and she gave us house to be there. I see. Okay. But uh, 1993, uh-huh. uh, that was in March month, uh, it was United Nations when they came in Srebrenica mm-hmm. and said Srebrenica is now protected of the United Nations. Mm-hmm. From that time, all uh, bad things more rapidly going to be worse than was before. Yeah. So was your, was your family able to stay together up until that time? Yes. Okay. There was together up uh, even, even in, in that time, but I don't know, uh, and and today also, I ask myself, why we have United Nations, and why they lie whole world, mm-hmm. because uh, everywhere where there came genocide was, yeah. in Srebrenica there came ninety ninety three in March month, that time, Serbs had get more control, uh, and and okay maybe people was kind of trying to hang up but even i, I, I can i can take that but <clears throat> 1995 that didn't nothing to protect those people yeah when genocide basically happened for the three days that killed uh, around ten thousand people's a uh, few hundreds raped and so on so on you have even uh memory center in, in the Srebrenica and Potocari. Mm-hmm. If you see that uh, they have child who was just born, just born, and if you can think that any human being, when child coming out from mom and they just step with, with, with legs and then just go away like nothing happened. And they have, uh, they have documented, they have Cemetery and, and uh, I think uh, years ago they find them in some uh, mass grave and, and now they yeah. bury them there. Yeah. Yeah, it's still identifying. It's, they are still yeah. identified because that they, they have a first mass grave, they have second, and they have a third. They, they try to hide those those mass grave, and some of of the Serbish people who <clears throat> who can't hold in, inside. They go in and tell somebody, and then they go and locate those things. Well, talk a little bit more about how the situation changed in '93, and how uh, it got, I know it got worse in '93. Uh, whole years <clears throat> up to '93, uh, people who lived on the village that could could produce little food, mm-hmm. like floor uh, floor floor for the for the food. Uh, some corns, uh, because mostly of the, those people who who lived in the village that have land, mm-hmm. and they could uh, go and put in in the land and and, and take and grow and, and then make food. Mm-hmm. Uh, we uh, also had enough water. Mm-hmm. Uh, every house have own water that didn't use city water, mm-hmm. and. <clears throat> People who was refugee who came, they could at least very very hard but handle. Yeah. Uh, mostly people have houses, and they took one or two family or three family in, in those house, and then take but mothers pull out all bed from the house, and you know just emergency emergency you have to do what what you have to do, and sleep all together, mm-hmm. and. <clears throat> Those things was kind of still. Uh, it's not good, but it's not bad. Could be worse. When 1993 came, when the United when the United Nations came in, in Srebrenica, then uh, Serbia start start make uh, make more pressure. Uh, that they're not only with paramilitary. They came forces from the Serbia uh, with. Uh, with with a few thousand uh, on on the one 
one way from the Baina Bashta, they are called its city, what, what its border with Srebrenica. And <clears throat> they come from the kind of little monster, what they are called Tara. Uh, they could see from the Serbia or Serbians and that do with artillery, with, with, with battery on, mm. on the, on the, on the shell and then grenades and then mm. rockets and so on. I mean, missiles. And then that put, when, when you put a whole village people, what they have around Serbians in one, one place, you can forget food, you can forget everything, then you can think how terrible situation is it. When you put examples around 25, 30,000 people on the place uh, where I lived, maybe between three and 6,000 people, then you can think of the situation. You forget food, forget other things. Yeah. And <clears throat> they didn't have food. They didn't have salt. But it's also important for, for the people. Basically, just to have a naked life, that's it. Yeah. And then, was kind of cows and so on, so on. And then coming <clears throat> uh, April 1993, between April 5 and 10th, Canadian battalion was coming in the Srebrenica as United Nations forces. Mm -hmm. uh, it was between 300 and 500 soldiers. That was sunny, very good days. And people go on the uh, soccer field to, to play and, and some people uh, playing instrument and other was, was dancing. Uh, Zerbers with three missiles from the around Srebrenica at uh, that time killed 63 or 64 people, around 120 uh, wounded. It was very bloody days. One guy was 14 years. He was Sead Bekrich, he is now in, in the Florida. He lost both eyes and he was in, in, in coma. Uh, one lady uh, from the California uh, she heard about about those things and she says just bring them to to, to United States in California and that was uh, that was transferred him to, to Zagreb mm -hmm. and from the Zagreb <coughs> he came to California he was in coma and uh, that was pull out his eyes on, with, with missiles but still was kind of like hanging and then uh, from the California uh, he was there in California, and after two or three months, he came in, in conscious, mm -hmm. and then she helped him. He he finished school and so on, and then, and now he lived in Florida, Tampa, hmm. but without ice, yeah. and he was just fourteen years old, uh -huh. and <clears throat> then uh, that day passed. So on, so on. Ca Canadian battalion battalion was in from the. Uh, United Nations, uh, April, I think it's what, 24, 1993, uh, like I says, I was also go from the Srebrenica to Tuzla, mm. and then later was, uh, I think, uh, I don't know sure, it was December, January, 1994, was uh, forces from the Netherlands. United Nations also, that was a change Canadian force replaced them. Yeah. And then uh, 1995 from the February, March month, uh, intelligence and the uh, some special agent, they report to United Nations, they report to governments on the Sarajevo that Zerbish <coughs> bringing more troops around Srebrenica. They're bringing more equipment, uh, so on, so on. And that says, don't worry, we will do it. We are United Nations, we will save you, blah, 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 blah. And even even in uh, July 3rd or 4th, 
1995 when United Nations, when Serbs uh, started to, to fighting and, and try to occupy Srebrenica. Uh, night before uh, intelligence of, of the forces of the of the Bosnian governments, the sitting and making <coughs> meeting, and then make plan uh, to protect. Uh, chef from the general from the Canadian battalion, mm -hmm. uh, no Canadian, sorry, from the United, uh, Netherlands. Yeah. He came and says, I know what you're thinking about tomorrow from the six in morning up to 10. Anyone who would be, who will be on the doors feel NATO pact coming and I will drop bombs. Mm -hmm. And I gave up, but was just lying. And Serbs start fighting, but from that time was everything late. Mm. People try few days, but I didn't have any more bullets, and I have to just go through force, uh, try to, to to come on on the territory where I control Bosnia has gone the military and so on. Mm. And the, many of them didn't have weapons. Mm. Some of them was coming in in, in Tuzla. Uh, many of them that catch. Uh, killed and so on so on mm -hmm. and that do many of them that would not uh, catch them but they use uh, also biological weapon yes and uh, <clears throat> how I know uh, I have my friends also and my uncle he's now in in, in the Kentucky mm -hmm. uh, Louisville he also told about those things and you have uh, uh, you have you have some people who just uh, just start taking off clothes and says that will kill me, that will kill me, and, and directly go from those and, uh, for, for, to them. Mm -hmm. And even after those things, after a few days, uh, when the occupy Serbians and blah blah blah, I mean, then the the after a few months, even few years, they are still catching people who survive. In, in the forest and try to, to camp somewhere because many of them didn't know way to, to Tuzla. Yeah. When, when, when they make barricade, when they try fighting with, with uh, some of, of the, those people from Srebrenica, many of them lost in, in, in the forest. Yeah. And on, on the those biological weapon, uh, tear gas and all things what they use, it, it's very hard. And, and I heard one guy, he was at eight year old his name Adel he live around Sarajevo right now he says uh, the catch uh, catch, uh, catch him and the the force him uh, to wash knife when they killed the man mm. and he was very depressive and he he is he's very 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 sick yeah. and uh, let me just I know probably you have more <clears throat> but uh, when I told you in the beginning of the, of the story how people lived mm -hmm. uh, with each, each other, uh, uh, basically like one guy who, who, who was in, in, in paramilitary, uh, his name Dragan Nikolic, he was in the Hague Tribunal, you heard about that, mm -hmm. for the yeah. <clears throat> uh, genocide and, and war crime in the former Yugoslavia. Yes and that, that he get justice for the 20, 20 years mm -hmm. and he says after that uh, he was very sorry and and, and, and and like he says it was ritual and uh, one guy who was also in the Zarajevo justice his name Bolislav Herak mm -hmm. he described on the detail in the justice how he did with with, with uh, people when they catch them how they are trained and he says few month, few months before the war start they practice how to slot men on, on the on the on the pig on the pork and he described how the how the slot few men mm -hmm. what was I was read and even when I heard many story I was shaking yeah the the move to Tuzla in, in 1993, did the UN organize the move? To, how did that happen? UN uh, organized 
uh, just a few uh, <laughs> people who was very very wounded uh, wounded mm-hmm. and uh, I should not be in those things mm-hmm. like I told you <laughs> on the beginning uh, somehow whatever I was maybe lucky mm-hmm. uh, one guy he was uh, he was a uh, what do you call he was sergeant doctor mm-hmm. he came from he's from Tuzla he came often time from Tuzla uh, through force uh, past enemy territory and, and try to help what, what what could he help and he helped me to to go in those helicopters and go to Tuzla I see yeah. but I couldn't go with, with, with those things and and, and 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 he told me if you don't go with those we will go with me I see now when you what is what was the situation like in Tuzla in 93 when you got there when I was when I go in Tuzla it was totally different it was civilized mm-hmm. it was like in forward when I go in in, in ham radio club I told them you can talk with God from here mm-hmm. uh, or, or because on, on on the things what I have but what we have in Srebrenica mm-hmm. they have everything like like normal situation because <laughs> that could go uh, from the Tuzla to Croatia, you know, a way was open and so on. But those things like Srebrenica, Arzepa, Gorazde was in, 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 in the secret from, from the Zervish paramilitary forces. Yeah. Yeah. And the, nothing came in, nothing came out. You had freedom in Tuzla, yeah. And Tuzla was, 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 was kind of totally different. Now, did your family stay behind in Srebrenica? Yes. Okay. Only my brother was with me. I see. And how did your brother get to go to Tuzla? Uh, because doctor says that, that he had to go with me as, uh, as guidance. I see. Okay. Um, so where did you live in Tuzla? What was your situation? Where were you staying there? Uh, first, they give us in the sports center, Maidan. It's uh, where I was... Uh, play basketball and so on and so on hold those refugees and then I had uh, from Sarajevo my friends who go from Sarajevo and go in Tuzla and they started the college and they lived in Dimentori and they accept me because condition was was totally different than, than, than those sports center and then from there uh, like I said Robert Nathans I had a uh, <clears throat> They offered to me go in the in the Tuzla uh, hospital of work, mm-hmm. and I asked them where are I going to live. They says, "Whatever you are now," I says, "I cannot live now where I am right now. This is just temporary." And I didn't accept those job. Mm-hmm. And then I go to Rachanitsa. It was around, uh, let's go say twenty miles from Tuzla, mm-hmm. a little city, and they give me house accept me for the working as, as massage therapist and uh, like I says uh, supervisor of the of the department of the massage and they give me work on on the ham radio help them and communicate with, with, with Srebrenica and, and, and make communication between those people who is in Tuzla and, and, and Gracianica with, with people from Srebrenica it was kind of excellent life mm. Th- those people was Kind of good and, and very nice. So you were able to get information from Srebrenica, what was going on there, and what the situation was like there. Yes, I could ab- able. Often time, I was I was also, I was made connection between, uh, chief commander of the military in Srebrenica with, with his wife. In, in she was in Tuzla, mm. but we didn't talk about those things because, like. <clears throat> On, on the those things, everyone could listen. Everyone who, who have yeah. ham radio. Uh, I want to tell you one situation. When I was uh, the, the change change place for the ham ham radio many many times in Gracenis, and one times they put ham ham radio station on the elementary school third floor. Mm-hmm. I was there afternoon was around three or four o'clock, I don't know what day it was. 
uh, one lady she had three child but she came uh, walk almost two hours mm. to come in Gracenica and talk to her husband in Srebrenica mm. and I was manage those conversations conversation and then found people in Srebrenica that find her, her husband bring them and so and so uh, when she started to talk with her husband, uh, Ozen was a mountain where I was also Serbish paramilitary. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the sent one battery, one, one granite, and a lot little missiles, mm-hmm. and the hit edge on the, on the windows. When I hit edge on the window, those things were there was, they all fell down. And my situation that was very tough. You have to think very, you have to very, very fast think. Mm-hmm. If they knows the target, you know, goal, then you are, got, you are done. They will send more and more. <laughs> and lady, <laughs> Lady was under the table. Mm-hmm. I took her for, for the hand and then he just got under the table. But I didn't let her to, to throw away microphone. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> then I took microphone and then I just said she's drinking water, she's, she will just be on the way. And then when I, when I took, uh, when I, when I uh, take off microphone from the server and said, I says, what is that? Is, is it is it muscle missiles or what? I says nothing, just raining and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful what information you share. Yes. Uh, well, because we know that the that, that, that especially forces and that that catching and that listening. Mm-hmm. If they are no, then then and, and and second second behind me in the same building was was kind of one part of the commands of, of the Bosnian forces. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I tried to do, but almost that, 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 that target. Mm-hmm. Did, did you see, at, in your time in Tuzla, did you see more and more of the war coming to Tuzla? Uh, in Tuzla, was not war. In city Tuzla, yeah, uh, but there was far away from Tuzla on on the round mountain. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there were forces on the mountain. Uh, military of the Bosnia and Herzegovina was was also around them, and there was kind of just step there. Mm-hmm. They are just trying to fight with each other, but was like that, and those territory was free, uh, only. What they do, sometimes send missiles on the Tuzla. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Mm, because they couldn't do anything else. I see. Yeah. And other cities was very hard, like examples, uh, like I said, maybe 40, 50 kilometers mm. from the Tuzla was Bershko. Mm. That was very hard. Mm. Uh, east from the Tuzla, also one city was Teočak, was also very hard mm. situation. And 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 also uh, kind of from Tuzla to, to to middle Bosnia was kind of also a hard situation, mm-hmm. but Tuzla is Tuzla Tuzla Srebrenik, Gračanica mm-hmm. was so so. Yeah. H- how often were you able to talk to your family? Well, maybe I could do every day, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to use situation all privilege what I have it. Mm-hmm. And once per week or, or, or month, I do that. Mm-hmm. And I could do it for the few places in Srebrenica, but like I said, I didn't want to use privilege what I have on, on, the, on the other peoples. And it, it, you know, <clears throat> the situation is, it, if I scratch your back, then I accept to use scratch my back mm-hmm. too. And I didn't want to put myself in those position mm-hmm. uh, because all other ham radio from Srebrenica probably have also some people in in the Tuzla, Srebrenica, whatever. But uh, if I 
insist to, to give them my family every day, then they will probably do that same way. Yeah. And if I do that same way, uh, many refugees that I have in Tuzla and Srebr- uh, from Srebrenica, they will make whatever strike and, and make me problems yeah. from here. Yeah. Like I already had one problems <laughs> where I have to use police to, to, to try and make make things uh, uh, supposed to go. Yeah, so dr- too much talking would draw attention. Exactly. Yeah, yeah to you and your family, family probably on the other side. So, What did your brother do when he was in Tuzla? Uh, he was at that 17, 18 years old and I tried to mobilize them ago in the, in the military forces. I see. And I didn't let them do that. Yeah. I go in the I had one friend, he was a chief of the one one part of the military. Mm-hmm. And then he gave them a free and then I go in the chief commander of the military. And I give them also make them free. But one you know that make them free, but you know <laughs> he was just high school and and young and, and then he was then narcissistic <laughs> and and then he says you have to go i don't have to go and then i have to have conversation with him i have to tell him how can you be stupid like that mm-hmm. he says why you see that many people have to go of course for to protect you and me this is number one number two some people is wounded some people is, is killed what do you think some people on the front line, they lost best friends. Mm-hmm. They came from the first, uh, first front line and you're talking like that. What do you think that they were thinking, they were thinking, who are you? Where are you coming from? Of course not. They will just take a gun and finish with you. Mm-hmm. What is what is realistic? What is possible? Mm-hmm. You know, when you are out of your mind, you don't care who is it. Yes. Yeah. And we're, when you are young, you feel like nothing can hurt you. Well, then, yeah. not only you don't, you know, put your yourself in those positions when you are in front line and you you lost maybe brother or best friend, yeah. and you're coming in, in in city and someone says, "Well, you have to go. I don't have to." How would you behave in that time? You lost friend or, or someone or family or who knows whom. You are on out, out your mind, and you will say. Yes, I do. You don't have, but now you will not go even if you want to. Mm-hmm. Just take a gun and then... Done. So while you're communicating with your family back in Srebrenica, does the situation begin to change there as far as the news you're getting back? With my family, <clears throat> when I communicate with in Srebrenica, like I says, I couldn't talk with them any any of those stuff. Yes. So you didn't know. Uh, I know. Yeah. But I couldn't do you could not know from them. From them, yeah. Uh, uh, because like I says, enemy listen everything. Sure. And I just asked them why is this how doing this uh, guy, girl, woman, whatever is it? Mm-hmm. And just basic stuff. Yeah. And that's it. About food, how much they have, are they have, so on, so on. I didn't ask. Yeah. And because uh, in that time, enemy was mostly weapon, uh, food. Mm-hmm. Make people hungry as much as they can and make make uh, more terrible situation in, in the city. Yeah, did they, during that period, did they stay in your aunt's house? Did they continue to stay in your aunt's house? Yes, they yeah. stay up to end. I see. Up to 95. Yes, in 95, yeah. my mom, my two sisters, that came in those line, and, and a father, a brother who was 90, 77, he, couldn't, he didn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The... Um, the evacuation, you said in January 1995, is when you evacuated? April 1993. 
No, no, when you evacuated from Tuzla to Germany. Oh, yeah. uh, from Tuzla to Germany, it wasn't evacuation. Uh, I was first... Uh, I also make... Uh, in that time, I was, uh, what you call, a mediator between uh, German Frankfurt University and Tuzla University. I see. And make them uh, some aids from the Frankfurt University to Tuzla University. Uh, I had my friend who was my roommate in Sarajevo. Uh, he worked that time something from the University of Frankfurt in, in Germany. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there was coming some uh, people, uh, German people in Tuzla and that uh, see how is life so and so on and then they offered to me come and I told them very clear if I came there I will not come back anymore. <laughs> you know, mm. but um, I made mistake. Why I did that, mm. and then I go from the Tuzla to to, to Germany and I stay there. Mm-hmm. And then, nineteen ninety eight, I make application from United to go into United States. Mm-hmm. I thought situation is better than 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 is it. And I was in the one interview in embassy, United States embassy in the Frankfurt. And they let me come. They give me visa. They, they pay whatever is kind of airplane and so on and so on. And that time, when I came in in, in Texas, uh, basically, you know, when I uh, first when I go in interview in Frankfurt, I interview supposed to be fifteen minutes. My interview was like like almost one hour, <laughs> maybe more. Uh, I asked a lady who was consul, I don't know what is her name, I forget. Mm-hmm. I asked her very clear, what would be my situation? What is my rights in the United States? And how about in my, my continued education? How about in my employment? And so on, so on. On the end, when I have so many questions, her word was, uh, I tried to have an interview with her on the German language. Mm-hmm. She didn't want to, she knows German, but she didn't she want to in English. But we have a translator. And on the end, she says, just go, you will have everything. <laughs> I told her very clear, it's easy for you, just go. You will have everything. But what about when I came there? I sent letters from the German city of the Ludwigshafen uh, to a refugee uh, organization here in Forfort. And a lady who was translating from the German to English here, she told me she saw those, those letters. But I don't have with me those letters. Mm. Maybe I have somewhere a copy, but I can find in, in, in so many of my stuff. Mm-hmm. And also what I said in, in embassy, and I told them very clear, I don't want to go there like someone who is very hunger, hungry and who doesn't have to wear, who doesn't have anything. Mm-hmm. All those things was positive. That says everything will be like you said. Okay. When I came, Everything is opposite. Mm-hmm. Nothing <laughs> like that, Tom. And and I make one mistake also when I came from from the Germany. When I when I <clears throat> go in, in in the police and tell them I have to I want to now visa to to leave United States. I mean Germany. Mm-hmm. And that says, okay, we will give you visa and your passport. You can go and be six months out of Germany and then come back. What happened when I came to the United States after one month? On first of month, well, basically, I wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. But I thought maybe, you know, you change place and everything would be better and so on and so on. And some people, when I meet here from the Bosnia, that says, oh, we'll be good so on so on 
when past six months I couldn't come back anymore. Mm-hmm. And this is after all things probably bigger mistake in my life what I make mm-hmm. when I came to the United States. Yeah. Not only not because I don't like people here. Yeah. Uh, n- because I don't like they, how they behave to people, mm-hmm. how they treat, and so on and so on. Yeah. So the mistake was you should have stayed in Germany? Should I stay? Uh, yes, the, the, yeah. I should stay in Germany or I should go back in Bosnia. Go back home, yeah. yeah. Now, when, when you were in Germany um, in 95, when the situation got very bad in Srebrenica, so do you have uh, information? Yes, I did have. Yeah. I had him radio with me in, in, in Germany. Yeah. I had license uh, 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 at that time in Germany also. They gave me license on the German tele- telecom. Yeah. Uh, my <coughs> call sign was uh, DF six WF, mm. and uh, I had those license, and I, I spoke with 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 uh, ham radio in Tuzla, and, and then some ham radio people from the, from the Srebrenica. Mm. When they start to to go away, then you couldn't make any more contact with us. Yeah. So, uh, do you remember the last conversation you had with your family? Uh, either last or first was seen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it didn't change. Yeah, yeah. nothing changed. Yeah. yeah, I was all all same. Yeah. Um, have you been back to Bosnia since you left? Uh, I was nine uh, two thousand nine and two thousand ten when we have to when we have funeral funeral for the my father and my brother. Yes. They found them and then, and then we have to give the NK and then when they make sure that they are those things and then we go in and make funeral for them. Well, what was that like for you? What is like for me? Mm-hmm. You know what? Basically, it was kind of hard and then kind of like, you know that you, you can't change anything. Happen what's happened, life still going. And you have to do what is momentarily and think if you can talk and, and, and give advice to some people that they don't make mistake. But nothing more. Just <clears throat> you know those when when you come those uh, when you see people crying and, and especially females and so on so on and then <laughs> and then I have also some after that finding with my mom uh, she went to some put some religion stuff but I don't agree with those things but it was okay mm-hmm. uh, can I ask you about the disagreement with your mom you know what uh church and mosque uh-huh. is big business I see. and do it what is basic what but you have to do it nothing less less nothing more mm-hmm. you don't have to pay to imam what you don't have to mm-hmm. and i tell her does he have salary she says yes does he have a job she says yes then why I have to pay them something extra? But she says, yes, but his salary is, is, is little. I don't care. If he is not satisfied, then she have to uh, uh, just go away. So many people doesn't have a job. Maybe someone would be, even for the little. So the- so you still have family in Srebrenica? Uh, I have some, but my mom now live near Sarajevo. She have house. I see. So you said it was um, hard, but also good to go back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you you still see all the friends. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, what was what was uh, still alive, and you see your culture everywhere. Yeah. Uh, people is, is totally changed, but still is kind of standable, mm-hmm. and uh, you can at least go and 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 see places where where you was some. You know when when you go somewhere from Texas. And you know you're born there, sure. you grow up, and when you come after a few years, you still like those places. Doesn't matter how is it. It's still part of you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, I, I, I watched one documentary a few days ago, guy in Montana, and he was grow up, married, and, and his wife later done, died. And when his son come and sell his house, and he start crying, he says, this is last parts of me. <clears throat> he grow up and leave that and so on so. Um, I want to make sure uh, Nate, I told Nate and Melissa are here as well. I want to make sure they have an opportunity to ask some questions that they have questions for me. Nate, do you have any questions? I do. Um, thanks for talking to us. Um, I'm curious, uh, there will be people watching this video mm-hmm. and, and seeing you. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you want them to know about the genocide? What do you want them to know about the Bosnian War and your experiences? Uh, what I want to the, the know that they don't believe, that don't believe when someone come and say, we will protect you. No one doesn't protect anyone. This is number one. Number two, uh, in Bosnian genocide in Srebrenica, a uh, whole whole world, United United Nations, knew one hundred percent what will be happen, but that that didn't do anything to protect. Even that could do that. Uh, why I say that? Uh, because uh, Samantha Fox, I think, is her name. She is now uh, ambassador in the United Nations from the United States. Uh, back that time, she was. Uh, <clears throat> she worked for the Washington Post, I think, and she was journalist from the Sarajevo. Uh, she sent her text to Washington Post, and she says, "What's going on? What she thinks will be happen?" And the didn't publish her letters, and plus the sent her uh, mail and tell her, "You are there to just." Talk what you see, know what you think, or what you know. Alan Little, also journalist from the BBC that time, he that he have same situation. Even he asked uh, on the conference in Sarajevo, why uh, did you take all weapon uh, from the Srebrenica resident and from the Srebrenica military? Why you didn't? Uh, why you didn't also take weapon? from the Zerbish who is around Srebrenica. That time was Swedish guy who was <coughs> commander of the United Nations in, in, in Bosnia and he says whoever try to do in Srebrenica he tried to occupy a blue flag or United Nations and we will answer them more stronger. Mm. That he says I told them I would never wish that United Nations protect my family. Mm. That and 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 I can't, I can't to explain those people who are going to to see or whatever is how was there. That doesn't have word. Uh, doesn't matter what language you are talking. Only people who was there, there knows how is it. Without food. And. On the few square of the miles, 36,000 people, without food, salt, any any other uh, things for the, for the change, clothes, and so on, so on. Terrible, and, and <laughs> you can't explain. You have to be there to, to, to in those situation. You also have a daughter. What is her name? Selma. Selma. Um, and she is eight, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, what do you want her to know about Bosnia and what will you tell her about Bosnia when she's older? 
Well, I have to be careful with it. Uh, first, uh, you, I have to be careful because if I told her just right now, all story, what's happened, maybe, no, maybe for sure, probably she will hate all Orthodox. And I don't want to. I don't want to that say that all Orthodox was false or guilty. And I have to wait to, to her little grow up and then explain to her. She asks often time why is her grandpa? I just says he's die. Because you can't you can just go in and, and try to explain and, and, and so on so on. Maybe she will find also someone here in Forford who is orthodox and who even knows anything about those things. And she will hate them and will not maybe talk to them or so and so. And that's why I have to be careful about those things. I wanted to ask, um, what did you learn of your family's experience later on uh, in 1995 as far as um, what happened to them? Uh, what I learned from them that I was naive, uh, including me, and that I believe uh, people who, can, who, who shouldn't believe. That, 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 that especially in, 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 in those things. And if I told you that, like I says, uh, drink a coffee and or, or eat lunch with, with other people was kind of normal every day. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also those people who was neighbor, half them grew up, that didn't have one of parents or that was very poor, that they didn't have food. When war start, those guys come first and kill those family. Mm -hmm. But it's very sad. Yeah. But like I said, uh, media manipulate with people. Uh, governments from the Serbia manipulate with people. And also all those people was uh, open jail when they come from the jail, all criminals, so on, so on. Then happened what happened. Well, we've. I appreciate you sharing your story. Are there some questions I should have asked you? Some things that you think should be shared that we didn't get into. Like what? I don't know. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. S stories as you thought of it, because I know, as we've led up today, we. You've been thinking probably about it and, and what you would like to share. Are there some things that you wanted to share that we didn't get to share yet? Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, also like you, like Nathan asked me, or, or <clears throat> you also asked me, United Nations and so on and so on. Yes. Uh, not only United Nations, and you asked me in the beginning how Soviet Union have influence. Uh, you have to understand that uh, Srebrenica occupied 1995, uh, like July, maybe, definitely 7th or, and, and, and 11th. Uh, <clears throat> United Nations, CIA, uh, United States, CIA, directly watch over satellite how the Irish mil military killing those people. Way how they are killing and so on, and that didn't do nothing. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> they also knows and 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 a few days before, then they occupy and start killing. Also, United States, United Nations, and French uh, generals and, and 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 I think Prime Minister was with General of the Paramilitary Zerbish in this morning and talk about those things. Whole world knows only people in Srebrenica that didn't know what's going on. You talked about it being hard here for you in the United States. Is that another part of why it's hard? 
Uh, no, both other part because I am I study political science and then I read many books and I knows mm-hmm. how politics going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, part why we had uh, transportation system is bad in the United States. Yes, yeah. different story than Europe. Mm-hmm. You can't be independent. Yeah. Uh, second, maybe this is only in Fulford, I don't know. Also agency what they are supposed to help mm-hmm. they don't do that like a for commercial for the blind uh, second things what is also <clears throat> uh, what I thought is totally different um, even even more is stereotype in the United States to disable and blind people than Europe mm. mm-hmm. and uh, if you Examples, if you go uh, in Mexican people or something, that thinks if you are blind, you are evil. Mm. Uh, if you try to apply some work, for sure, you, they will not accept you. Mm. They have to many, 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 you have to, you have to have good connection, very good uh, to approve that you know, do those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Europe still is have little but not like that yeah. it's much better yeah. and in former Yugoslavia and, and, and Bosnia for sure not was like that mm-hmm. if you have license if they are know you know how to do go ahead and do it mm-hmm. done yeah. here is not like this I had situation <clears throat> and I that 2004 when I was in Inter- internship for the massage therapy and when receptionist get call from the patient that want to massage uh, I don't know why but I didn't want to do anything I just she told them we have one student he's blind mm, I see, yeah. and many patients doesn't want to when they heard that you are blind. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is, what is still totally I don't know. And also, if you want to be teacher here, <laughs> you are blind. It's impossible almost. And now I have a question for you. Yes. How many disabled or blind people do you have in your company? Uh, we have um, many disabled. Um, okay, don't consider yeah. disabled if they have something, but blind or deaf? Blind or deaf. Um, we have a deaf studies uh, department at Baylor. Okay, it's okay? Yeah. Deaf uh, studies, it's okay. Uh, and so we have a deaf, um, he, he's actually done interviews for us uh, with, with on video. Uh, a, a deaf gentleman, deaf professor interviewing a deaf missionary, actually. But yes, I would agree. There are limitations that should not be there. Not only limitation. Yeah. It's not problem with limitation, mm-hmm. but problem is is, is in, on on the huge huge stereotype. Yeah. What what I totally surprised yeah. of the one huge state with good power, mm-hmm. what I consider a good economy, mm-hmm. and I thought people is more civilized. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we've, we've covered a lot of ground today. I appreciate you sitting down, uh, Abdullah, and sharing your story with us. Um, it's, it's something that we want to take and share with others to understand the experience you talked about now, and you're also giving us another understanding of your experience being not sighted and what it's like to live uh, without sight here. So thank you very much for sitting down with us. Thank you for having me.